Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Fellows Friday. Today we are here with Ryan Bilger, class of 2019, and he's going to discuss his experience as a fellow and what he's enjoyed and why he decided to do this. So our first question is, what majors and minors do you have? History major, CWS Public History minors. I declared them last year because, wow, I, didn't, because I didn't need to wait. Great. Did you know you were going to do that when you came in, like set? Yes. Straight from the uh, If since I was like six years old counts, then yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so he's had a lot. Your data too much. Oh, we're back. Oh, okay. We're back. Um, our next question was, what research no, have good. you done okay. so far with the CWI, and what was your favorite project you worked on so far this year? So last semester, I know a lot of people who read the blog might not know who I am because I haven't had any posts up yet. Sorry. That's because last semester I was on the Wayside Project, so that took up my time. This semester I started off with the USCT project, which that will get posted apparently eventually. It will, that. yes. So you'll see that. And I just turned in my John Brown paintings blog post Ooh, the other interesting. night. Finally. So what's that about? Do a sneak peek? So, yeah. So um, there's some very famous paintings of John Brown that are out there, and they show very different sides of him. There's the John Stuart Curry mural in the Kansas State Capitol building where, you know, he's standing like, this with the gun and the Bible in his arms. And there's the other one that's probably the most famous by Thomas Hovenden, um, in which he's like on his way to death, being led to the gallows, and he stops to kiss a baby. Mm -hmm. So it's these very, very different right. sides of him. And what I looked at was both, I guess, why the artists did what they did, both in terms of their own viewpoints of Brown and what their patrons wanted, which were also, was also a big deal and influence in them. I don't know. I just think. I've really gotten into art in the last couple of years. Mm. If you asked me five years ago, I would have said, you were nuts if you said that I was going to like art. Yeah, right. But surprise, I do now. So I think art is a fascinating tool for memory and seeing how memory of people, places, events, etc., in this case people, is reflected by art is a, is a good topic. Mm -hmm. And it was something that I just thought of. It just was the first thing that I thought of when I was thinking, okay, what do I want to look at? Yeah. It was the first thing that came up. Yeah, that sounds very interesting, and so keep looking out for that. We'll be posting that uh, hopefully in a few weeks. Uh, Martin, next question, somewhat related, is who's your favorite figure from the Civil War and why? Honorable mentions go out to John Buford and Strong Vincent. But okay. number one, Winfield Scott Hancock, very easy. Been that way for a long time. Why? He's just the quintessential, great, I think, great commander on the Union side, at least. Um very solid, of course, Hancock the Superb coming out of, mm -hmm. what was that, Williamsburg, I think, where he got the nickname, and then here, of course, everything happens here. Um, interesting personality, one of those guys who didn't seem to quite get so embroiled with the politics, very good with his men, very good with um, just relating to other generals, and then you get into the whole presidential campaign, which is a whole other facet to him. It's not really why mm -hmm. I like him quite so much, but it's interesting. Maybe I'm, I might write a post about that, so yeah. that's another preview. Maybe another one. Long-winded answer of basically saying it's Hancock Great. for a number of reasons. Very interesting. Are you involved in other programs related to the Civil War here? Civil War Club, uh, Vice President in Waiting next semester. Oh, interesting. Um, live in the house. Yeah, so we have a theme house is what he's talking about uh, for all that students interested in the Civil War. So there's a lot of us that like to talk about these things for fun outside of school, too. So that's what we do. Uh, what's your favorite book related to the Civil War? So I, I had to think about this because it's like picking a favorite child. <laughs> um, number one, I read this many, many years ago, actually. I think I was in like eighth grade when I read it, but it still stuck with me as my favorite. Sickles at Gettysburg by uh, Jim Hessler hmm. is my favorite. And Despite the title, it's not just Sickles at Gettysburg, it's Sickles' life. And it really shows you just what a character, to put it nicely, yeah. he was. Um, like, you know, the, the, it's rather famous, the story about him and Philip Barty Key and the temporary insanity trial, and it covers that. It covers, you know, why that happened. It covers um, what happens to Sickles after the war, his efforts in memorializing. And the thing that struck me was it was talking about how he was like 94 years old and like having an affair with his maid. Oh, wow. The dude was a nut <laughs> in the best, most entertaining possible way. And the book was very illuminating in that regard. So direct Civil War, that's my favorite. Yeah. A little bit tangential to the Civil War, involving a Civil War figure, but not uh -huh. sort of from the war. 
Destiny of the Republic by Candace Millard is about the Garfield assassination as a, the nucleus mm-hmm. of the book. It also talks about Garfield's campaign, how he was basically a reluctant candidate for president. He, he wasn't seeking the nomination. Mm-hmm. He gave a speech trying to nominate John Sherman from Ohio, and everybody listened to the speech and was like, yes, we want you! Uh, and he's like, like he goes, ball. he's like, oh, okay. But, so he ends up getting the nomination. <laughs> so it, it is, um, it basically takes these three lives and puts them together. Garfield, Charles Guiteau, and you see just what a creep, just what a creep <laughs> Guiteau was. And Alexander Graham Bell, who comes up with this sort of pseudo, like, pre-early x-ray type device that they try to use to find the bullet and get it out of Garfield's body. So it's just the intertwining of these three lives, how they come together in this, you could say, cataclysmic moment for American political history. So that's a... Yeah, I would have never thought about that. That's a run... I don't know if I want to say it's a runner-up, per se, but it's a it's a favorite, like, oh. not necessarily directly Civil War. That's okay. <laughs> close. So do you have a favorite part, though? Or is that another um, tricky question? So, no, no. With all due respect to my good friends at Manassas, where I interned this uh-huh. summer, hopefully they won't, like, disown me after this. It, it's here. Yeah, same. Here, my shout-out to my dad for taking me here when I was six. It's been a family thing for a while. You know, my grandfather took my dad here. My dad took me. The whole mm-hmm. time I'm in the car going, where? going? Where are we going? What's going on here? I don't remember a ton from that first trip. I remember going through the old visitor center and seeing the massive arrays of cannon tubes and bullets and everything. Yeah. And I remember looking out over the Pickett's charge field. And I don't know why, but I was just like, yeah, this is cool. So then through the rest of my childhood and obviously into my adolescence and early adult life, Gettysburg has held a key place in my heart. Like I look at things I wrote in like fifth grade, where yeah. I'm like, I like Gettysburg. Aww. <laughs> Seriously. So did it start your interest here? Is that where it all began? Yeah. The first time yeah. you're just like, where are we? And, and it didn't hurt. It, it didn't cool. hurt that my dad has all these old books and yeah. blue and gray magazines at home. So I'm like, oh, pretty picture. I that pretty pictures. Later. Yeah. And now it's like, okay, well now it's, it's something real. Mm-hmm. It's something interesting. So that might help, but in some ways it's also just it just happened to strike the right chord. Yeah, and you're at the right place to study it more now, so... It's been great here, and, like, there's a great program here to study it, and I'm sure he would definitely agree with that. Mm -hmm. And next week, we're also having another fellow come in and talk about their experience, uh, Jeff Lauk, who is our managing editor at the moment. So if you want to join us next week, we would really appreciate that. We're very happy you guys like to hear what we have to say as well. So thank you very much for joining us, and we hope you have a great day.